Okay, in this video we're going to look at setting up the enemy to attack the player. Uh, from the previous video we set up so the um, enemy um, can be killed, so not back, so the enemy comes up, then they go down, I walk through them because that collision's turned off when they die and eventually it does disappear. So if you're not up to this stage, please go back to the previous videos and watch them, or else you might get a bit lost. So, to begin, we're going to open our enemy character. And inside here, we're going to go to the viewport. In this viewport, we're going to set up camera to be right and lit like this. <gasps> And we probably want to bring this up the central. And then up here on the left hand side, we're going to add box collision. So, and we're going to call this tap box. So this box is going to be used to decide when to start attacking. So We're gonna make this make this bigger. So on here on the right, you can change the shape so we can pull it out, get taller, and then you can also bring this in front. So if the player is anywhere in this range, the enemy will start attacking. So obviously this will take a bit of tweaking. So the enemy is just in front, or sorry, the player is just in front of the enemy. Then the enemy is going to use this to work out when to start attacking. Just compile and save that. Okay, so next what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down on this right hand side and search for on component begin overlap. So when this box is overlapped. So we just click the plus, take us to the event graph, and open this box. We're going to go back to the viewport and click on the attack box. And we're just going to click on the on component and overlap. So when the player stops being in the area, that is going to stop attacking. So um, once you've got these two, you may want to bring this one a bit further down. We're going to be looking at this following code. So there's quite a bit of code for this. In this first section, there's three screenshots, and then there's a couple of other little parts as well. So for the first part, we're going to take this on begin overlap and cast this to my player's character so it picks up when that happens. Then it's going to set an event, a timer by event, give it a bit of time. And then the custom attack, custom event called attack player. And check if the enemy is dead first. If it is, then obviously you can't attack. If it's not, you can start doing the attack against the player. So to recreate this, we're going to go to cast the goblin character first from this on begin overlap. So this will be your character that you play as. Um, then just set timer by event. Just here. Now we need to make this attack event. So here. I'm going to set it. However, you may need to create this as a variable. Now, this is a timer handle variable. So, you may need to search for that. So, timer, 
time a handle and it will come up. So from here we then need to create the custom event. So we've done custom events before so we just right click in space, search for custom event and add. I'm going to call this attack player and then connect this up into the event. Set this timer to be maybe one and looping can be ticked on. It's just saying the we are setting the attack event. And from here we're going to check if the golem is dead. So from the last video we set up this variable. So we can set branch. We can then pull in is the golem dead? And work this out first. Now like I said before, if it's true, then there's nothing the golem the enemy can do, the golem can do. It is just going to be able to die, fall over. Um, so we need to do the false branch. And that's going into a do once, and then we're going to set another variable. So we do once. Okay, and then we're going to look is is the enemy attacking now? I've set it up already. If you don't have this, then please set this up as a variable. It's just a boolean variable. Um, and I'm just going to connect that up. Now I'm just going to check up here. Now we set up the dead. I don't think we set up the attack. No, we didn't. So that's going to be a new variable for this video. Um, so you will need to set up. I'm just going to grab these and pull these up, up here a bit more. Uh, closer to the other stuff. This may need to be a bit further down. Okay, so, so last bit of this first part, we're going to get, let's take this on and then put a delay in for the duration of the flipbook. So if you have set up the flipbooks properly, like we showed in previous videos, you should have them here as variables. So what I can do is I can pull in the dying, and get this. Oh, sorry, not the dying, the attacking, um, the attack. Connect this to a duration. So if you look for duration, there is get total duration time. So it's going to get the total length of the flipbook that you've connected here. And then we can connect that up to the delay. So we just pull a delay out from here. It's going to work out exactly how long that animation, that flipbook is going to last. Okay. So now moving on to the next screenshot I've got here of the code. Here's the delay. Now we're going to set up a sequence. First off, the sequence is going to turn the attacking off. Then what it's going to do is going to do a line trace to pick up the player in the noise itself um, to pick up when the player enters the area um, and then it's going to set up an attack so a hit on the player character and then here it's going to finish off by applying the damage So, I start here with the sequence, connect this into a sequence, um, we then set up the is golem, uh, sorry is enemy attacking, set this here. So this is going to turn off the fact that it's doing this so that you can do it, it will do it again it doesn't get stuck in a loop or anything 
and then it leads into a line trace for objects. So we have used uh, a line trace in a previous video, I believe. Yes, um, I think we did just up here. This was for the character's movement, so to work out if there's anything in front of it. So a line trace for object. Like so. And then what we're going to do is connect this to get back to location. And it's kind of hard to see the lines, but it's very similar to what we did last time. So these are going to connect up. So we've got this part first, get back to location. So pull up here. To location, and then we're going to get back to forward vector. We're then going to multiply this, so multiply, so vector star vector. Um, we're then going to split the structure pin. So if you right click on this circle here, the split struct pin, and that will break it down like this. And then this is going to connect to oh, wrong button. it's going to connect to an add. Also we're going to times this by hundred on the X. So ultimately what this is doing is working out how much so it's getting the actor's location. So that's working out where the enemy is. It's then that's where the line's going to start searching from, and then 100 in front of the forward of the actor, so of the enemy, and it's going to add that to the actor's current location. So if you search the plus sign, we're looking for a vector plus vector, and then in here, I'm just going to break this. This to the bottom just so it's a bit easier to see. Connect this one in. So it's adding this actor's location plus the forward vector times 100 to work out where to stop the line. So if you, the line's not picking up the enemy far enough, then this like this might multiply. It might need to be higher. Okay. So then we need to set this to an array. So. So from the object type, we need an array and from the actors to ignore. So um, is it make array? Yeah, make array. And then we're going to search for palm on here. And then in the actors to ignore. Also going to search array, make array again. And this one's just going to go to self, so we just search self, just so it doesn't pick up its itself as the actor. Okay, so we're just going to move over this way now, and from here we're going to search for break hit. Oops, sorry. Break. And let's part from here. Break hit result. And then just drop down that arrow so you can see all these points. So as you can see right now on this side of things. It's going to connect up to a branch. Do that. Pull this down out of the way. You can see what we're doing. It's up to a branch. So, and then what you do is I get the player character, and you call this to the hit actor. 
a right clicking get player character. Connect this to an equals. We can connect this hit actor to that. And then we can connect this up to the condition for the branch. So now we know it's going to hit the player character and now we just need to add that damage for the player. Now the damage is going to be done partly in this video and partly in the next video. So in this video we'll set this all up and then in the next video we'll actually look at the player side of things in the code and set up actual damage happening. Um, so in this last part we are going to apply damage to the actor. So we can pull button, pull this hit actor out, search for apply damage, apply damage there. So go straight into the damage actor. Now that's connected. We can start just finishing off this part. So from the branches true, this is going to connect up. So so if it does hit the character, it's going to apply the damage. Now, we need to ensure that it's enemy damage and self here. So I'll do the self first because that's pretty easy. Damage causer is the person causing the damage is the golem, the enemy. And the base damage, no, we can either type this in here or we can create a variable. One way to create a variable for this is just to right click and promote it to a variable. If you create, promote it to a variable, it will automatically create a variable for you on here. And in here, as long as you press compile, you can then just type in here, just by clicking on here and then typing in here without having to go through and change all the numbers where it is. So I could just change this to to 5. Um, then what we want to do, we need to create, connect this to a, a branch, a delay. So connect to delay. Now we want this false. So, we want this false to all, so I'll go into the delay, connect that up, and I'm just going to double click on this line to add some things to pull it out of the way. Just double click in, just to pull that line out of the way. It's a bit cleaner. Okay, now to work out the duration of the cooldown of the attack, again, we're going to promote this to a variable. And we're going to call this attack cooldown. So we know this is the attack's cooldown. So when we press compile again, we can add the variable. We can set the time of how long the attack has to cool down for before it can do it again. So let's put this down to two, two seconds. And then what we want to do is we want to actually drag from this completed all the way back into the repeat in this we'll do once. Now it's quite a way away from each other, so I'm just gonna pull it out and connect it up to the reset. Now, my suggestion is again to add a couple of points to pull this out of the way. Completely up to you how you place these. It's just to sort of make it a little bit easier to see. So you can see I'm just I'm 
this down out of the way. Like so. Okay. So now this top part is done. Basically this will allow the enemy to attack you when they get inside the area. Um, when you get inside the area of the box that we set up. So now we need to ensure that the enemy stops attacking when you leave that area. So I'm just going to compile and save and then we're going to have a look at the bit of code we need. So this is the next little bit of code. So again we're going to, from the end, we're going to connect this up to the cast goblin character and then clear and invalidate timer by handle and then this connects up to the reset as you can see the little wires there so quickly just cast this to the player character which in this case is the goblin character again yours might be different then it's the clear and invalidate timer handle This is going to be the attack event. So we bring this in and get that. Connect that up. So that time is going to be cleared and reset. And then we're just going to connect from here to the reset as well. So I'm just going to select all this and press C and just call this enemy attack okay so we've set this up so the enemy knows to attack and uh, when to attack um, but we need to set up the animation and uh, the event tick so as you can see here we ignore this part we have from the last one we're checking if the golem is dead from the tick so if the enemy is dead and now we need to check if the enemy is attacking and if it is to set up a flipbook so it's going back to this so you should invent it like this from the previous video so we're just going to pull these two out of the way we're going to go from false and set a branch It's automatically going to go to true, so we're just going to break this. And set it to false. Pull this up out of the way. Now we're going to get the his enemy attacking. Connect this. Go from true. Set flipbook. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to grab the attack flipbook that we set up earlier, get this, and then we're going to connect this up. So one last thing we're going to do is we're going to delay for the length of time of that flipbook. So again, get the flipbook search for duration and connect this up to the delay and then the last thing we need to do is just ensure we set this golem as attacking let's bring this in be turned off just so it doesn't get stuck in the attacking and it goes back through again compile save this okay so now to just do a quick test now sometimes these tests don't go perfectly but hopefully this time it will so I'll just press play okay 
So the enemy is coming towards us, and when he gets close, he starts attacking. A little bit of time in between, attack. So as you can see, the health bar on my character that I'm playing as isn't going down at all. Um, obviously, when I hit them, at the moment the attack is quite heavy, so it's hit, taking them out with one hit. Um, in the next video, we're going to start look at setting up so the enemy actually causes damage to you. So we know the enemy is now attacking us, now we just need to set up the enemy causing the damage to our health.